Although the tropical soils of the Northern Territory are generally too acidic for fossil bones to survive, high above the floodplains, the sandstone rock shelters of Ubir offer up something even more precious. Um, so this area here is basically a special place for my family. Um, this is where my grandmother was born and my father. This area here was the main camp, pretty high, so they can get food, gatherings and stuff like that. A lot of these paintings represent years and years of living in this shelter. So whatever they caught, they basically painted on the wall to um, remind people that that's what happened previous years and stuff like that. So most of them represent food. Fish, um, wallabies, kangaroos, goannas, um, long-necked turtle, um, you name it. But there's one painting that holds the most intrigue for Jonathan. And this one here, I've seen a lot of kangaroos and wallabies painting, but this one here is completely different. That real big one, see? It takes a keen eye to pick up the kangaroo through the multiple layers of images. You see that emu there? That's where the head is. And you can see the ears there. It's got like a spikes on them. And another thing is the tail. The tail is so thick at the end. Never seen anything like that. I don't know much about dinosaurs and what they call them, but there's one there where it's short and it's got a big stubby tail. That's what that one looks like at the end, you know? It's completely different to the Alton kangaroo painting. Even the toes are different. It looks like it's only one toe sticking out. Where the other one, you got three. See? So, I think it's one of the big kangaroos. Yeah, the giant one. Very freaky to see. Could this possibly be an eyewitness account of the mighty Procoptodon? More than two and a half thousand kilometers away in Brisbane, paleontologist Scott Hocknell has some evidence that could shed more light on the question. This artwork is intriguing because the assumption would be that any big kangaroo painted in artwork might be from Procoptodon, the giant uh, Stenurian kangaroo. But in fact, when you look at the painting, a lot of the front part of the snout is missing. So maybe it had a little bit of a longer face potentially a pointed snout. Maybe this is the animal that's been discovered at South Walker Creek. In 2009, a dig team at South Walker Creek near Mackay in Queensland found the resting place of at least 13 extinct species of megafauna, including a type of giant long-faced kangaroo from the Macropus family. The most interesting part of the whole painting from my perspective are the singular claws. They're very long and thin and very straight. Now that's something very similar to what we find in the actual fossil itself. Now it's not complete. It would actually, the whole fossil would be about this long. And over the top of that would have been the actual sheath of the claw itself. So we're talking about a dagger-like claw that's around 15 centimeters long. That's exactly what the artist has reconstructed in the painting. When we look at the tibia, the shin bone of this gigantic extinct Macropus, it's very long and gracile. And it's, that's the sort of proportions that I would have expected. And that's what I see in the illustration. So that's really exciting. What we do know is there was an overlap of more than 20,000 years between the arrival of humans and the disappearance of megafauna. At the end of the day, the painting basically tells us that they were here and they used to live here. We share the same time. We just have to basically, I suppose, you know, scientists and indigenous people sit down together and talk about it and, you know, find out what really happened. But why is it that some species of megafauna still walk the earth today while others perished? 